how do you actually come up with the idea to make a milk without the cow? So I had a chance to watch a documentary uh, in Netflix. So it's about like, you know, um, how, you know, um, cows farming and animals farming harms our environment and it have effect to the consumer health. Explain it in real simple terms, what you're doing and how does it work? The process is pretty much like brewing beer. So in beer brewing, you put the microbes into the big tank, right? And you put in like water and nutrients for microbes and it produces alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But for our case, since it's a special microbes that we put the cow's milk protein DNA in, uh, it able to produce uh, milk proteins instead of alcohol. In terms of nutrition, it would have the same basically nutrition profile as milk. So in terms of like nutrition of the protein, it's equal to cow's milk protein. Are you the first company in Thailand working on this? According to my knowledge right now, uh, we are the first one and the only one in Thailand. Welcome back to the plant-based podcast Asia. I'm your host Nick and today we're ready for a new episode to inspire, educate and connect. And today we're going to be talking about milk, but not milk that you like you're used to know it, but it's actually milk and taking out the cow. Today we're talking to Chanapon he is the CEO and founder of the company called Moo, based here in Thailand. Welcome to the show, Mr. Chanapon. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me to the show. I'm Chanapon. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Moo. We are developing a technology called precision fermentation, which basically we can, you know, like create like milk that tastes like cow's milk, but without using the cows. Wow, this is so exciting. And I've come across your brand before. Um, yeah, you've been out there. So it's a really an honor to actually talk to you in person today and talk more about yeah what you guys doing and how you're doing it. So maybe you can start by sharing like, how do you actually come up with the idea to make a milk without the cow like what is is your background in food science or or what is your pain point that you figured hey let's let's try to do this okay definitely so i think i mean like uh, my background is not in food science i'm a chemical engineer but i mean like it's all about the passions like back then in around like 20 20 20 21 something around that area uh during the covid era so, I mean, like, you know, you cannot go out, right? So I had a chance to watch a documentary uh, in Netflix. So it's about, like, you know, um, how, you know, um, cows farming and animals farming harms our environment and it have effect to the consumer health. So I got hooked up to the idea that, okay, we should reduce or, if possible, cut down the consumption of, you know, products from animal farms. Uh, so yeah, I do a research more into it and it turns out that the problem is real and it, you know, like one of the big section to climate, you know, contribution to climate change. So, uh, we need to find alternative way to, to, you know, like to eat, right. If we not consume right. animal based products. And at that moment, I think like majority of the product in the market are, uh, mostly like plant-based alternative. So um, I try to be like flexitarian. I try to be vegan, but um, you know, like given that I'm a dairy and meat lover, so um, no offense to you, Nick, but you know, like the taste of plant-based product is not, you know, like um, close to the real thing in the eyes of, you know, like dairy lover like me. So um, I gone out and find like, how can we make like, you know, milk that tastes pretty much the same without using the cows and it turns out that you know like milk um the things that give taste texture and property to cow's milk are the milk proteins uh you mm -hmm. may have heard it it's called casein and whey right. proteins right. so if you want to make like alternative milk taste very similar to cow's milk we need to synthesize those molecules out of something and turns out that there is a technology called uh precision fermentation and recombinant proteins that can do this kind of thing. So 
I mean, like at that time, I think like, okay, I'm on something and it's a very promising proposition for me. And I think like, if we can do this, we're going to solve a big problems to not just me, but, you know, consumer out there and the world as well. Yeah, wow. That's I, I, I love the fact that you're one of these person who kind of watch a documentary, got inspired, and then not just kind of return back to the same old habits, but actually making a change and thinking like, how can you help fixing this problem? And as a founder myself of a startup, I'm very curious about this this uh, initial phase, like from that idea, like, okay, you, you did your research, you found out, okay, there is precision fermentation, there's a way to solve it, to actually, you know, putting a team together and start really working on that. I mean, how did that all come about, really, to, to not just, you know, from the idea, but actually go further and start working and experimenting? Yep. Okay, so I mean, like right after I okay, I thinking to myself, okay, I'm I think this technology has you know is very promising and has a lot of potential. So uh, the first thing that I do is that um, I went to see my professor at a uh, university and tell him about this kind of projects that okay, if you want to do this, and then he, I mean, like he is a chemical engineer like me, right? But he has a lot of network around like you know with the faculty of science and with a lot of like researcher who can do um this precision fermentation and recombinant protein technology so i got referred to that person it's actually like a professor as well mm -hmm. and that is how it begins so okay we talk to we talk together and then we try to you know start getting the team recruit the team to starting this mm -hmm. and then how were the first beginnings and um where is the product right now so Tell about this phase from starting off until where you are at at this point. Yeah, I mean, like uh, at the starting, it's quite rough because it's quite like a new idea, right? And sure. um, the scientists uh, in my team, um, they don't actually have experience, you know, like um, it's called like expressing, which means like make the microbes to produce milk protein. So they don't have experience, like, you know, using the microbes to express milk proteins before. So we do a lot of like research. We try to find out like what's out there in the world, like technology. And, and we do a lot of like, you know, finding information, like how we're going to make it. So it's quite rough at the time. And we have like a few members in my team. Like it's just like three people in my team with, you know, like one or two advisor. So at the start, it's quite rough. And then, uh, after that, we, I would say like we quite lucky. So we got support from, um, you know, like both government grants and we got a uh, VC um, who like believe in the missions, like funding us in the pre-seed round. So from that point at, to this point, we grow our team to around like um, seven, eight people right now. All of them are like scientists working in molecular biology and, and fermentation space. And currently we are able to produce um, the prototype. So basically you can Test like a very little of you know like milk that is come from the lab. Actually, I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is that is amazing. I mean, congratulations first of all to, to that. When, when in what time frame was that? When did you start off? It's around like mid of twenty twenty one. Uh huh. Okay. Um. So you could actually. Did your university have the equipment to do this precision fermentation? Because as far as I know or understand, it needs quite a high end and special equipment to do that, right? It's not something that you can just try out at home. Uh, I mean, like, um, again, like, um, I think like I'm a lucky person because like my university uh, and the university that I partner with currently, Kasei uh, Sat University and my university, Jula Longkorn, they have this equipment to do this kind of thing. But I mean, like I in see. the very like small lab scale. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So after like we had an idea so we can start working it properly. I see. Now let's talk more about the technology, because again, this is something very new. Um, and now in layman's terms, like if you have to explain microbes and precision fermentation and this process, help us and all our listeners to just explain it in real simple terms, what you're doing and how does it work? Okay. So, um, I think like, actually it starts by, um, so, you know, like any 
how should I do this <laughs> to an audience, right? Okay, so uh, it started by, you know, like... Um, Your well, audience are not scientists, okay? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ima I mean, imagine like, explaining to a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, like any cells, like mammalian cells, which mean like humans or animal mm -hmm. cells or microbe cells has ability to produce proteins. That's okay. the first thing that you need to know first. And then uh, the way that it do it, it's, uh, you know, like it start by reading the DNA sequence. So DNA sequence is like, you know, computer programming. So if you put it into computer, the computer like works as per instruction, right? So mm -hmm. the cell is pretty much the same. So if you put the DNA sequence into the cell, it's going to create proteins according to the sequence of the DNA that we put in. And, you know, like in cow cell, they have a protein sequence that can produce milk proteins. So what we do is that we take that sequence from cows and insert it into microbes. So right now, you know, like microbes can read that DNA sequence and being able to produce milk proteins, pretty much the same structure as cow cell. Yeah. So, okay. so you're how... taking, you're taking cells from the cow or you're taking DNA from the cow? Okay, so the concept is that uh, we need to create DNA sequence. I mean, like in the old day, maybe like 30, 40 years ago, you may need to extract DNA from cows. But as technology progress, right now we don't need to do that. We can just, you know, synthesis DNA yeah, in the lab. If we, mm -hmm. if we know the sequence. So what we do is that we synthesize the DNA that has pretty much the same sequence as cows, milk protein, and they insert it to the microbes. So we don't touch cow at all. I see. Okay, you insert it to the microbes, and then they're going to produce those proteins, right? Yeah, so the process is pretty much like brewing beer. So in beer brewing, you put the microbes into the big tank, right? And you put in like water and nutrients for microbes, and it produces alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But for our case, in it's a special microbes that we put the cow's milk protein DNA in. Uh, it able to produce uh, milk proteins instead of alcohol. Okay. So that so, so what you're getting out then as the final product is not the milk yet, but you're getting you're getting the casein and the whey protein yeah, also. Milk proteins. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then after like the fermentation process, uh, what we have is a liquid that contains you know like milk proteins in it. And then after that, we have to do the things called purification. Basically, mm -hmm. turn that liquid into powder, and you know eliminate every like contaminations out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Including like the microbe itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, you know, filter everything out. And what we get is, you know, like the PO, um, casein and whey proteins. Wow. And then after that, we take that powder, the milk powder to formulate into any kind of dairy products. It could be like liquid milk. It could be yogurt. It could be cheese as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. And then in terms of nutrition, it would have the same basically nutrition profile as, as milk or or is it totally different? Okay, so the protein itself is like the same as milk proteins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And casein itself, like the, I mean, like proteins come from amino acid, right? right? Amino acid, like, you know, like in sequence, it's gonna create proteins. So the amino acid sequence is the same thing. So in terms of like nutrition of the protein, it's, you know, like equal to cow's milk protein. And but, then the um, rest you can formulate basically by yeah. yourself according to the product. Yeah, right? I'm going to say that I, because I, I, I see. You know, it's okay. on the formulation stuff. I, I see, I see. Wow, very impressive. Hunchanapon, this is amazing. I mean, and uh, I'm proud that this is happening in Thailand. Are you the first company in Thailand working on this? Or are there other companies out there trying to achieve what you are doing? Um, According to my knowledge, Right now, uh, we are the first one and the only one in Thailand. That's but awesome. around the world, as a promising technology, there's a lot of like you know startup trying to nail this down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the so you're saying right now you're still operating at the lab scale, right? So you have mm -hmm. basically the, okay. So then the next question is the scalability. Like, how is this scalable and feasible? Then also in terms of Pricing. I mean, will it ever be able to compete? Even I know we're talking probably now a little bit in the future, but will it be able to compete and eventually replace milk? Okay. So um talking about like the potential, definitely it has a potential to um come to price parity with cow's milk. Because like if you think of like in science term, microbes, you know, like it 
eat like nutrients and it produce like milk protein, right? Why cows like when it eat grasses, uh, you know, like it had to produce like bone, blood and, and other stuff in cows as well. It's not just like everything is not directly like convert into milk. So in terms of like, you know, uh, ef effectiveness, efficiency of conversion, it ha is a lot more than, you know, like cows, definitely. But currently uh, at the lab scale right now, uh, we are working on that to make the price parity with cow's milk. So right now we are not able to, mm -hmm. you know, make the price at cow's milk level, mm -hmm. but it has like a lot of way, for example, uh, including like, you know, reduce, first of all, like, you know, improve the microbes ability to produce milk protein, like improve the yield, the tighter. Um, secondly, it's about like, you know, lowering down the the, the we call it culture medium which basically the food that we feed to microbes mm -hmm. so you know microbes can eat anything like uh so we can you know like instead of using the things that is high quality we can use like waste or byproducts from agricultural section to feed the microbes and it can produce more protein and mm -hmm. it's about like you know improvement of like process effectiveness and and many many things and and so, how about the scalability i mean can this also be scaled up and feed you know an entire country eventually yeah, definitely. I mean, like we are, I mean, like at the progress right now, we are working on that, but the potential definitely, yes, because like, you know, like precision fermentation or fermentation is not something new, right? Um, you know, like we, we, I would say like human have mastered on this technology already. I mean, like for fermentation, we use it to uh, produce um, beer. We use it to produce like a lot of like uh, products, you know, MSG and, and a lot of products that we are using this technology. And talking about like precision fermentation, uh, you know, like the concept that we use microbes to produce some substance is not something new. For example, like human um, uh, insulin, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, we cannot extract insulin from, from mammal anymore. So what we do right now is that we use, you know, like insulin from microbes produce and uh, the enzyme that we use to make cheese curd. When when you put like it's coronated inside like right. mm -hmm. that's inside has been made from this technology as well. So I in terms see. of like the ability, no doubt it's gonna mm -hmm. be there, but it's gonna take time since it's a new protein. I see, yeah. very impressive. Now, what are the challenges that you're facing at the moment, or that you have been facing so far? Okay, so um, I would say like currently, um, the challenge is that it's a new technology and it's a hard take right so no one have done this before so mm -hmm. basically our team or any other team in, in in the world need to come up with something new we, we cannot just copy and paste you know like journal in the internet or something we have to come up with something very new uh, i'm gonna compare it to you know like those kind of like ev um car that you know like at the starting point we need to come up with something very innovative to crack the code on you know um the price parity with cow's mill and the how how are we gonna make it effective? So mm -hmm. giving me like technical part is one of our challenge right now. But after like we complete everything on the production side, I think like another things that could potentially be challenging problems for us is that uh the consumer perception of this kind of food. So we definitely need to educate the markets and we need to uh come up with a good marketing strategy to mm -hmm. you know like make consumer like not curious about this and ensure that it's safe to eat right yeah right this is actually what i'm about to going into to talk about now so a little bit more about the product features and detail also from the consumer perspective so first of all is this product can it be considered vegan or plant-based okay uh i think like um it depends on the definition because like this product is quite new, right? And it's not something that, you know, vegan community has adopted. So um, if the definition of vegan is, I mean, like if it has to be something that comes from plants, definitely it's not because it's from microbes, not plants, right? It's not mm -hmm. considered like plant-based, definitely. But if it's like, if vegan is some means something like, you know, it's not, come from animal right Definitely. that's yes. basically the yeah. i would say that the definition by dictionary i would say vegan is it doesn't come it's not sourced from an animal so according to that definition you're saying it's vegan because there are no cows actually involved in the process not even for the cells or the dna you don't need to touch no. the cow right mm -hmm. so i think it can be classified as vegan mm -hmm. but um for plant-based i don't think so yeah mm -hmm. Okay. 
And does it um, contain lactose? Uh, so lactose is uh, sugar in cow's milk. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we, you know, like ferment to get the milk proteins, right? And then we got into the formulation step. So the sugar that we add to the formulation step is not going to be lactose. It's going to be, you know, like sucrose or I any see. other sugar. I yeah. see. So it's vegan and it's lactose free, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another feature, if you're talking about health perspective, mm -hmm. uh, I would say like uh, the superior feature uh, comparing to cow's milk is that we don't have, you know, like antibiotics or hormones residue that, you know, like, right. so, so, so we use like antibiotics and, and hormones to make the cows produce a lot of milk. Right. And it has some residue, even though like, it's a small amount in, mm -hmm. in, in the products that we consume. So we don't have that at all, like zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, Obviously, I haven't tasted your product yet, but now how does it taste? My, I mean, if you formulate it into, let's say, a full fat, regular dairy milk, does it taste like milk? And if you were to do a blind test, would it actually taste the same? <laughs> uh, so we are not there yet. We are going there. So according to the, the testing, like the closed group testing that we're conducting right now, the feedback is that it's 70 to 80% close to cow's milk. And the feeling is going to be something like, um, you know, like watery milk, mm -hmm. like a diluted milk. Mm -hmm. I That's see. the feedback from, from the see. group right now. I see. I see. Um, are there any products on the market in the world already with this technology right now? I think um, in the U.S., yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are mm -hmm. like, um, I think ice cream made with mm -hmm. this uh, whey protein, like mm -hmm. microbes-based whey proteins and um, ice cream and, and, and drinking milk as well. I see. I see. And it's going to come in more and more because like currently, um, I think like there are three startups that got uh, U.S. FDA approval already. Mm -hmm. uh, one in U.S. and two uh, from Israel. I see. So are you already talking to the Thai FDA about this uh, product and how are they perceiving this? Okay, um, so I talk with them and uh, okay, so it's a new thing, but um, luckily, like, you know, Thailand has, has a protocol to, you know, like, so we have a checkbox. If you can do all of that, we can sell this product in the market. As I mentioned to you earlier, this technology is not something new. We use this technology to produce, you know, like um, insulin or chymosine enzyme. So it's not something new. So we have a framework in place in order to approve this kind of products. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is that we have to make our production process comply with those requirements. I see. I see. Got it. So in terms of the vision, like what, where is Mu going and what kind of products do you envision to put out in the market? And what is your timeline for that, realistically? Okay, so I think like our products, the first product is going to be uh, drinking milk. And it should be in the market by the end of next year, 2025. So currently, we are scaling up our technology. And then we need around like six months to one year of FDA approval. So in total, it's going to be something around like one and a half or two years from now to put the products in the market. And the first product is going to be um, drinking milk. So um, the, the, the market that we are targeting, definitely Thailand is going to be the first location because we have production based here and in other countries that we have a lot of like engagement with is Singapore because mm -hmm. of the you know like the regulation there is very friendly mm -hmm. and we have like a lot of our friends and network there as well so it's going to be like Thailand Singapore and probably Hong Kong the first three countries that we are targeting mm -hmm. and in terms of like vision right now so I don't I mean like um from my perspective as you know like currently the world has problems with food security right so the world population going to be, you know, double in 30 years, something like that. So we're going to have a lot of like food shortage and dairy is going to be one of them. So our vision is not, we don't want to replace like 100% of like cow's milk. But what we want to do is that when we have that kind of like shortage situation, we can be like the complementary to, to that area. So when, you know, like we, we, can, we cannot supply, you know, milk to any area or when we have shortage, you can turn out to moo as, you know, like an alternative that tastes pretty much the same to cow's milk. Yep. I see. Are you also looking to like, um, is this going to be a B2C brand only or also uh, you also want to sell your technology or your um, your powders, your extracts basically to like other companies so they can formulate um, 
their products. For example, to us, right? We're making mm -hmm. plant-based cheese. Let's say, oh, casein, plant-based or vegan casein. Um, is this something that you're also looking to do? Yeah. Um, so the um, I would say like business model, uh, it, we, we're not going to be B2C right now. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is that we're going to partner with um, dairy producer or like food and beverage manufacturers to supply our protein powder to them and then they're going to mm -hmm. come up with the end products to the consumer so i think like I the best way to get these products adopt in the market and that's our priority right so we need to solve the world problems is you exactly. know like by being partner with the big corporates who already have like consumer in their hands and they they, they are better than us in formulation definitely mm -hmm. yeah. i see and can it be patented what you're doing or how does yeah. it look like with ip um, definitely. I mean, like the technology side, we have the strain, we have the, um, you know, culture medium, which is like the food that feeds to microbes. We have the production process. All of that can be patented. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. That is so, so impressive what you're doing. And again, I'm proud this is happening in Thailand. And where else in Asia are other countries like doing this, you mentioned Singapore, any other like neighbors or Asian countries that are working on this? Yep. Um, so according to my uh, knowledge right now, there is one startup in Singapore and um, two startup in India and mm -hmm. one startup in China. Wow. Currently in okay. Asia, around like five of us, which, you know, like basically comparing to the consumption of milk in Asia, <laughs> I don't think is enough. <laughs> you I know, agree. like how many cows farm in Asia? Right, and this is right, the only right. five startups. Right. Exactly. So you're a pioneer. You're a real pioneer, Chanapon. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. And before we wrap up, if uh, people or listeners want to follow your journey, want to follow Mu, where can they do that? Where can they sure. stay tuned? Sure, sure. We have a LinkedIn page, which uh, you can help me put this. We'll do. Yeah. Put it in the description. On the screen or like description. Yeah. So okay. please, like, you know, you can follow up, follow us, like, you know. And okay. be our supporters. So we're going to make it happen. Definitely. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Any words that you want to close up for today, Kunchanapon? Um, so I think like, <laughs> I don't have any word. <laughs> no, no words. Okay. I think you said um, enough. And thank you so much for giving us this explanation. Because again, um, one of the slogan or our slogan is to inspire and educate and connect, right? So I think the education part for this product especially is very crucial and important because as you mentioned, you are or we are we are like solving the world's problems. And um, but if there is new technology, there is always doubt, right? Is it safe? Is it um and is it is it tasty? Is it good for me? And so on. Is it good for the environment? And um so I'm, I'm glad that we can be talking about this today. And to all the listeners out there, please, please, please help to subscribe and help to share this message of Chanapon and his company, Mu, what they are doing. I mean, they are the pioneers in Thailand for this uh, precision fermented milk. And I stay really uh, tuned to, you know, the product launch end of 25, you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. So we, we're going to make it happen. And thanks so much for having me in the show, Nick. And Thank as you. you said earlier, so yeah, we need to help each other together to, you know, get through this crisis. And as you know, like in Thailand right now, um, so, you know, like a lot of people may not, you know, concerned about climate change, but I have mm -hmm. a lot of friends who are like farmers or, you know, like growing like fruits in Thailand. And the last year and this year, we have a lot of problems with the production because of the climate change, because of, you know, like raining season is doesn't come as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, the production mm -hmm. of durian, the production of fruits, a lot of fruits in Thailand is like, you know, drastically declined. So mm -hmm. I think it's happening right now and we need all hands to get us like as humanity go through this challenge. We Thanks need all me. hands. You've heard that out there. So again, thank you so much for leaving your comment, subscribing and sharing this episode today. I'm your host, Nick, and this is the Plant-Based Podcast Asia. Thanks for tuning in and see you again next week. Konchanapon, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Nick. So adikau.